friends. It's February. Happy February. Happy February 17th. Um, my name is Nick and this is my floss tube. Uh, I come on here and talk about my stitching, my crafty friends, um, sometimes other things, mostly creative things that I can get my hands on, but you know, 90% of the time, if not more, it is stitching related. Uh, I am on Instagram. Uh, Stitches with Spinxes is my Instagram handle. And if you're new here, welcome. And if you're coming back, thanks. I'm happy to have friends who like to listen to me chat about my crafty things. Um, if this is not your first time watching my floss tube, you know that I have been going through um, some issues. I have not been stitching as much as I would like to be. Um, look at this. Hmm. Hmm. Isn't that a nice piece of uh, hardware there I got going on? So I, sorry, just got really close to you guys. I, in December, I started to feel some pain here and um, I was thinking I would take a week off from stitching and it will get better. And haha, ha, that was not what happened in the slightest. So now I'm feeling pain here and here. And so I have to wear this beautiful thing. I am going for an MRI on Sunday to hopefully pinpoint what's going on. They still think it's ulnar nerve entrapment. I'm just hoping I don't need surgery because that this no, no, thank you. No, 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 not 2021, please. Um, trying to think where my head was at. Um, I stopped going to PT. I've been going to a chiropractor instead, my chiropractor, uh, and I am hopeful that he's going to be able to help me. He has me wearing this when I'm working and I'm just really hoping that I'm at the end of this journey. But uh, because of that, I have not been stitching as often, as much, ne like nearly as often, but I do have finishes. So this video is going to be FFOs and uh, haul. For the FFOs, I stitched everything. So an FFO is a fully finished object. Um, I stitched everything. I finished nothing. I am one of those people who is way too terrified to touch her own stitching. I put a lot of time, I put a lot of work. I don't want to then screw it up. So I send it to people who know what they are doing. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I am one of those people who has a closet with hangers with my finishes on it. And um, I had said to myself, you're not stitching, right? You're not adding to the list of finished projects. So let's get them FFO'd. Let's get them all done out of the way. Uh, yeah, I've been sending so many things out. I went in there to look, to really evaluate how much stuff I had. I had to call my best friend. She's on Instagram, uh, so thinking cute crafts. She'd go all laugh at my expense because I am nowhere near getting that hanger down to zero. There might be three hangers. <laughs> and when I was stitching, I used to be a monogamous stitcher and I stitched a lot on, on 14 count Ada, which is not my preference any longer. But because I was monogamous and because of my stitch count, the pieces that I have are so big. They are gigantic. So finishing them is just not, it, no matter how I do it, they're just not inexpensive, right? Because they're massive pieces. So um, I'm trying to get those out slowly, surely trying to, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe at the end of 2021, I can have an empty hanger, huh? <laughs> Um, if I continue to not be able to stitch, I, maybe I will show you guys a finish. We'll have a finish video. We can, you know, instead of a whip parade, we'll have a finish parade. We can go through the years of Nick stitching that just lives in a closet. I'm working on getting them out though. Um, so I, I have some finishes here. I'm going to start with the framing stuff. Um, what I am trying to do though, is when I'm sending things out, I have a lot of things I stitched in 2020. And I am trying to get myself to get the older pieces out of the closet because I'm like, when I say older pieces, I have some things that are, I did in high school. I have, 
2013, like, get, get, get out of the closet already. I stitched you years ago. You should be on a wall or something, something, right? <laughs> so I'm trying to make sure I'm not just sending out the new things. I don't think I succeeded with the framing stuff, but definitely with the stuff I sent to Alyssa, Starry Nights Studio, finishing service. Top quality, by the way. So let's first go into framing. I sent my things to the professional framers at Total Framing in Virginia. It was the first time I have ever done any sort of professional framing and it was, I am sold. It was a great process. It was so much fun being able to see my options, um, tell them what I was looking for, see what they could come up with and really picking things out. So I really enjoyed that. Um, and after seeing how they frame, I will not be framing anything ever again. Like unless it's like a postcard or like a print, that'll frame. That's easy, right? You just throw it in there, but like stitching? No, it's just their stitch. It was just, I can't compare anything I could do to what they do. So without further ado, this is the first piece I have stitched by them. Stitched by them, stitched by me, framed by them. <laughs> this is Plum Street Samplers. Oh, you think I'd remember the name. Blanken, 100% Blanken. It might be like Mary 1, Mary 2. She's got a couple of those, but this is a Plum Street piece. Um, I had seen somebody stitch it on red. I do believe the Santa was not meant to be stitched in red, so that's what made this an easy pattern to throw onto red. I love this piece. I love all things Plum Street, um, so I definitely did not trust myself to finish this, and I think sending them off to Total Framing was 100% the right choice. Look at how pretty. Everything's so straight. I did not put glass in these. These are seasonal pieces, and I will only keep them out for a little bit, I'm thinking the things that I intend to have out year round, I'll put glass on just for some extra protection, but they do, they did give me some hangers in the back. I know that some frames came with, um, there are some frames that you can like sit out, but none of the ones I chose had that. So, so pretty. I love this so much. Is it weird to keep this out all year round? How many walls can one have? Can I have a, a Christmas wall too? I'm already gonna have a spooky wall. We'll see. Probably don't need a Christmas wall, Nicole. Calm down. Um, they, I ended up sending all Christmas pieces. I did that in 2020 though, by the way. Totally stitched that in 2020. This I also stitched in 2020. It is another Plum Street. It is called Rack Stack. Look at them, dear. How cute are they? Huh, actually, it's so funny. That blue is the same blue that I used there. This blue, it is from a Color and Cotton Christmas box. And I'm blanking on the name. It doesn't matter too much because it was a limited edition. I am obsessed with the blue. Please bring it back. I've been pleading with them on Instagram since they came out with that box. It had to be like a 2019, 2018 box. I just want it. If it ever comes out, I'm buying so many skeins of it because it is oh, hands down my favorite blue. So here it is again in the rack stack. Uh, I used, this was originally stitched on a blue linen. So I love a chance to use some crazy linen. So I went for it, got this linen off of one, two, three stitch. I cannot remember the name of it. I'm doing real good today. Um, but most of this is the called for colors. And the only, the, what was cool, this, this is cork. Look at this framing. Does that not look like it's an actual tree? I, and I was having a hard time picking a frame for this. I didn't know what color I wanted. And Terry at Total Framing was like, but wait, I, ha I know this is it. And she was so right. Look at how beautiful that is. Love it. Love it, love it, love it making a better case for myself for a Christmas wall. But the last piece I sent out to them was something else I stitched in 2020. It was, I'm trying to remember now if it was 2020 or 2019. It's a recent stitch, was Mrs. Claus Bed and Breakfast. This is a primitive hair pattern. We about to have a guest, y'all. He coming. <laughs> Here he is. Nobody can see your little face. 
Look over there. Look over there. Ooh, there we go. Oh, but I can't bend my arm. Knox the Sphinx, everyone. Thank you, honey. So now, let's get down. Finish this. Um, this is Mrs. Claus' bed and breakfast. <laughs> Milk and cookies, sir, nightly. Oh, and that's a cat. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. Oh, we're just, this is great. I don't know if you can tell. There is some silver in here. Looks a little bit like snow. And I like the effect that we got. I was having a hard time picking out the frame for this one. Sorry for that. Um, because I didn't know exactly what I wanted. I didn't know what color was going to look best. And Terry was so patient with me and pulled a million options. And I'm really happy with the one I went with in the end. Look how cute. Sorry about that. My little awoke from her nap much earlier than I anticipated. Hoping she goes back to bed. We'll see. Um, so that's all I said to Total Framing. I've sent more stuff out. So that, uh, get, the, get that stuff out of the closet. Um, so hopefully I will have stuff to, they're, they're severely backlogged. Like, I think I sent that stuff out in October, um, but I was very well aware of it. They made me aware that they were running behind. They even asked me if I wanted to get the stuff before Christmas. Um, I, I didn't need it before Christmas, right? Because they live in a closet. So if they've been living in that closet for such an extended period of time, there was no reason for them to have to rush. I'm sure there were people who really wanted their pieces sooner let them work on them first so i was cool with that so if you're cool with that i definitely recommend them for framing and you you don't i am nowhere near virginia i am in california uh so they you can send your stuff to them and be anywhere in the u.s i don't know if, i don't know if it's for oh sorry cat parts i don't know if they go further than that but definitely throughout the u.s they are willing to frame and ship you everything right right so Everything else I sent to ooh, Alyssa at Starry Night Studio. Come here, come here. You gotta sit here, you gotta sit here. Nobody wants to see your tush. Nobody, trust me. <laughs> and um, I just got everything back yesterday. I knew the stuff was coming, so I waited to film this so that I could show you guys um, the beautiful finishes she did. I mean, she is a superb finisher. So this, I am happy to say, is a finish that I had in the closet for a very long time. Honeybee, I do not remember the name of the designer, um, but it was the first piece that I ever had that had special stitching in it. I had some satin stitching, I had over one stitching, I think there was something else. No, satin stitching over one stitching. And I actually think it might've been the first time I put a button into my stitching. So this was a bunch of firsts for me. And unfortunately I had put, like the, if, if you were to remove this cording, the top of the linen is almost right there. There was almost no, um, there wasn't a lot of margin. So I definitely couldn't have it framed. Um, but Alyssa was able to work her magic and to turn it into an easel for me or a flat fold. I used to quilt way back when and uh, I sent her the fabric because I spent a lot of money in fabric over a couple of years and it just sits in my closet and I don't want that. So I'm trying to get it out of the closet um, and send it off to somewhere where it will actually be used. So Alyssa is kindly helping me do that and is using them for my finishes. Look at these little buttons. These are Jabco buttons. Oh, they're not buttons, they're pins. Aren't they cute though? Look at them. This three. I'm like the same color as the honey, the top of the the top of the honey. Um, so you really can't see the little this one's the hardest one to see, but they are so cute. A bee, a beehive, and a jar of honey. So cute. Max, but how am I supposed to reach all my other things, honey? This one, I'm very excited about this one. This is another long time closet resident. <gasps> Wilhelmina, this is another Plum Street piece. Look how cute. This is a 
framed mounted, I think we said circle piece. No, 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 someone really wants to be up in the action today. It's only because I'm sitting here and he noticed. Um, but look how cute. Did I say it's Palm Street? He's got me all confused now. I definitely did. I sent her this fabric too, and I sent her the little button, and she worked her magic. Um, I really knew I wanted something circular for this, and I, my initial thought had been to send it to a framer, but um, they don't do, Total Framing didn't do circular frames, but it, it was designed to be finished as a circle. But it was also designed to be on a smaller count fabric, I believe. I think I ended up using a 32 count and I think it was supposed to be stitched on 36 to fit what she had intended it to be. Um, so Alyssa had these adorable Tears for Turkey frame finish and I knew it was perfect. And I love how this fabric plays off of the butternut squash colors, the browns that are in this pattern. So cute. This one I am going to leave up here around. I know it looks very Valentine's Day, but it's just... I don't know it's just very springy i feel like i'm going to feel so much joy every time i look at it and i actually stitched i don't remember what color wilhelmina was supposed to be but i did use like bing cherry and super loved the way she came out made it more valentine's day but right i can leave this up here around right someone tell me i can <laughs> next this was dutched, stitched this year. This was my very first Prairie Schooler. It is a freebie that they had on their website. It might still be there if you are so inclined to stitch it. Um, I don't remember if it had a name. It might be just Who Who or The Owl. Um, it was meant to be stitched in only two colors. I added the third for the little leaves. And again, I sent this fabric to her and she just finished it so perfectly this really brought out the yellow in the piece and she just went right with it with the browns and the like the ribbon it just came out so perfect i am i don't know what i was picturing when i sent it to her but this exceeded any expectation i had of how it would look like when i stitched it it wasn't necessarily my favorite piece i enjoyed the stitch um it was cute it was fun but now I really love it. And that's that's something awesome. If your finisher can make you love your own work even more, you've got a good finisher. I cannot say enough good things. Lee's coming back, y'all. <laughs> um, the next pieces, more things stitched last year, are hands-on designs. Her Christmas Flamingo collection. This one is Flamingo Bells. Oh, look at that. How cute. These were stitched on a R&R &R fabric. I'm trying to think of the name. They don't have too many colored fabrics, so it should be easier to find. Like, it might have been, like, sea glass. Lucky Penny. Lucky Penny is what this is stitched on. All the calls for colors were used in the actual mingos. And I actually got this from Abby Topknot. One, this is flamingo all the way. Look how cute. It's a flamingo pyramid. Oh. <laughs> and then fa la la mingo. Hey, how genius. I love a good pun. And a flamingo pun? Yes. I am slowly transforming my house into like a beachy home. So if I can get more beachy like Christmas patterns out in the world, yes, please. And I consider this beachy, which probably makes some sense because I don't think there's flamingos at a beach. It's not where they roam, but it gives you a sense of a warm Christmas, right? So that that is what I'm looking for. Give me a hot Christmas, Christmas in the sand. But for what? So next, ah, oh, my little humbug. This one, I saw Michelle Bendy stitch. I had never seen this before. And I actually haven't stitched too many bugs, which Michelle had pointed out was a thing that she wanted to do more of, stitch bugs. Um, and she had stitched her little humbug. 
I found him on eBay for a couple bucks. And when I was stitching him, it was Christmas time. And I think of humbug and think bah humbug, which I associate with Christmas, the Christmas Carol. And I was like, hmm, I'm gonna make him that person in a relationship who is with someone who is Christmas obsessed, but they hate Christmas. That is this humbug and his significant other that dazzled him, made him get dressed up for Christmas and he freaking hates it. And he wants you to know, and I love it. Look at that, it's a cute little Jabco button. And this I got from Not Forgotten Farm. And I checked, she still has a bunch up on the on their Etsy site. So if you want this little, I don't know if I should call it a paddle, wood hanger, they definitely have more. And you can fit stitching on it. Albeit small stitching, but it can be done. So cute. So cute. My last piece is a heavy top knot stitcher design. I'm sure you've seen it. It was a freebie um, last year. It is a piece, I'm trying to think what the name of it was. Maybe it was called Trans Wizards Welcome, but it it was just the lightning bolt. I wanted to say arrow. It was just a lightning bolt and it was turded in DMC, the colors of the trans flag. And this was important for me because um, I'm somebody who believes in people's rights and trans people are part of the people that I include in those rights. And it, it didn't sit well with me, everything that JK was saying. And I refuse to believe that if Hogwarts were a real place or even in any of the novels, movies, any Harry Potter world that you can be, that has been conceived is in reality, right? Because we've got Harry Potter world, the wizarding world of in Orlando. You cannot tell me that a trans wizard or witch would not have been welcome. You can try. I mean, you could definitely tell me that. I just won't believe it. And so I felt like this was an important stitch for me. Uh, Harry Potter has always been a big part of my life. And so I want to have this on the Harry Potter area in my room. And I thank you, Abby, for this. Love it. And look at the finishing on it. She even went with the colors. I mean, I'm telling you. That Alyssa. Look, 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 look. It's even white. I mean, how smart. Ugh. Have I talked Alyssa enough up? If y'all start sending her finishing though, please leave room for me to keep sending her stuff. <laughs> She's my go-to, my savior. She's going to help me get rid of all the things on that hanger. You'll see. <laughs> um so those are my finishes that's more finishes than i normally ever have so that felt like a lot for me i'm going to show you guys my haul um i did put myself on a spending freeze recently um four patterns just because it was hard i'm having a hard time accepting that i can't stitch right now because it's it's just such a part of my daily life right it's almost like brushing my teeth there is a time of the day every day that i sit down and i stitch um so not being able to um it's proving hard right um so i told myself i need to stop buying things until i know that i'm good to stitch again but all of this came in before i made that decision because you're gonna laugh when you see how much stuff I got sitting here. <laughs> but that's okay, it's okay. So, I know some of you like haul. I hope I enable some of you to go buy some stuff. And if I did, please tell me what you bought below. I wanna know, what what did I help you buy? <laughs> what? How did I help your stash grow? This one, I might've broke my own don't buy things rule when this one came out because I think this was right at the start, actually, of when I got hurt. It says, I wish you lived next door. It is a heart string samplery piece. I bought it straight from her. It came with some finishing. Um, and for me, uh, I knew I had to have this because I moved four years ago 
and um, my family and friends are all back in New York, the majority of them anyway. Um, and I miss them and I was supposed to see them quite a few times last year. There were weddings, there were, there were things that we had planned and I got to see them in February and, uh, I was supposed to be back in April. It didn't happen. I, I haven't seen them. I haven't seen any of them in a year and, um, I miss them desperately. So, and I mean, I get to talk to them and it's just not the same. So when I saw this, it made me think of them and what I intend to do is I found a picture of myself, my mother, and my three very best girlfriends who are out in New York. And um, because when you see this, right, it just says, I, I wish you lived next door. I, I, I love it. But it's a strange thing to have in your house unless you're going to give it to them. And there's a lot of them. Like, I don't want to stitch this piece that many times. And two of the three girls are also stitchers. So in all reality, they, they could stitch for themselves. We could probably do a three-way swap if we wanted to. But our last friend is not a stitcher. And I can't see us convincing her to be one. Uh, so I plan on stitching this and taking that picture and sending them both to total framing and having them use a mat to have two spaces in the frame, one on top for the picture and one on bottom for them because they are the people I wish lived next door. And I, I feel like I'm getting, I'm getting emotional. I'm gonna stop thinking about it, um, but I miss them. And um, I will be happy to have this stitched in the house with them above it. Next, I got some things from Acorns and Threads. This is Winter Gatherings by Brenda Gervais. This does not count as a friending spree because when she came out with the autumn one, I asked them to put me on an automatic ship list for this because they were going to have one for each season. So this was coming to me no matter what. And I'm so excited it was. Look how cute. I love that it's a basket you know you always want to find a new way to finish things right and she made these baskets um i'll probably end up stitching these and sending them to jolyn to finish into this shape i sent my berries off to jolyn ah, i'm going to add after this i took a video of my finished berries so that you guys could still see them, even though they weren't going to be in my possession anymore. Um, but I'll probably send these off to her when I get them all done also, because nope, not doing it. Look how cute, look at the little snowman in a basket. <laughs> and then I also got in that same order, the love notes. And they are five little Valentine's Day smalls by Brenda Gervais. And I love this idea. I want to get a basket, stitch them all up, and have them like this in pillows. These I might do. I can sew a pillow. Uh, back to my quilting days, I learned how to do it. And I'm, I'm very confident with my ability to make a pillow. So when it comes to that part of finishing, I'm not too worried. I can do that. So I will get to these eventually. Look how cute. A lot of them look like you would fly through them too. Like, I don't know about this cup. Her cups are... <laughs> Her cubs are some dense stitching, but that, that looks like I could do it real quick, and that too. Sorry for the one-handed. It's just, it's hard for me to bring the hand closer than this, so go like that. Super cute. Oh, this one, I don't know if this is still online. If you're a big Harry Potter person, run. Run to the Black Needle Society's, I want to say Facebook page. Why? Go to their website. It's, is it on here? If you type, if you just go onto Instagram and look for the Black Needle Society, the link to their website will be in their Instagram page. They uh, do these retreats in a box. And I don't know when it started to get really big. Um, I feel like last year. And last year they did their Frogwarts box. And I did not even hear about this until the boxes were in people's hands. Um, so I just, I didn't know it was a thing and they were aware of that. The two ladies behind the Black Needle Society. So 
sorry, my phone was letting me know that I have low battery. Um, so what they did was, is they decided that they were going to release the pattern that was in the first year Frogworth box. I don't know if it's a limited run. I don't know if it was a certain amount of copies, but they did decide they were going to release it. So that if you were unaware of the retreat when they first started them, that you would still be able to get this pattern. I do know that now they have said that since more people are aware, um, they will not be releasing any other years in the future. They will have an add-on option. So if you are coming into this and you've missed one and two and you sign up for Frogwarts year three, there is going to be some sort of way that you can buy the previous year's pattern. So they're working on that, but it will not be released to the general public. And that makes sense, right? Because they said it in a video, they're, they're almost devaluing their own work if they, if they allow you to do that because... You know, they're going through all of this work to get this box together and then to just give away just the pattern at the end. Um, it takes away something from the people who are going through the whole experience. So this was available. I jumped on it because I wanted it. I have no idea how I'm going to finish this because there are seven books, right? So I do believe they said, here it is, design year one area is 222 stitches by 83. Year one to seven, one through seven is 222 by 599. And there's a little thing, height estimated by design area of year one. So it's gonna be a big one, right? So I don't, they, for, they finished theirs into a drum. I just don't know if I want seven drums. I feel like that's gonna end up taking up a lot of room as opposed to one massive piece with all seven years. We'll see. We'll see. Look at this. Oh, look. It came with this little lead on minder. Look. It's a chocolate frog. So cute. Uh, trying to decide where to go next. Oh, so one of those friends I was talking to you about. She is on Instagram also. Her name is Deanna. Um, I know it's Craft Queen, the first part of her Instagram thing. I believe there's some numbers at the end. I can't remember the numbers, um, but we do Christmas. She and I have been friends since we were, since I was six months old, because I'm a little older than she is. So she was born when I turned six months. And so we've been, we were neighbors then, and we are just still going strong. Um, and she sent me some charts for Christmas. And there's definitely another one. Hold on. Here it is. So she sent me two charts for Christmas. She sent me this Stacy Nash spotted pinky. Look how cute. Oh, look at those piggies. Look at those piggies. If any of you follow Kitten Lady on Instagram, uh, she recently saved a mama pig that she calls Mama Do. And Mama Do had a bunch of big piglets. And this is exactly what I think of. Mama Do had nine piglets though. Nine. She might have had more. No, I think it's 12. I think she had 12 piglets. Too many, those too many babies for me at once. But look how cute. I had to have this. And she knew, spoke to us both. She's a big animal lover, Deanna. And then she also sent me a Plum Street, this Halloween delivery. And how freaking cute is this? It reminds me of the Haunted Mansion, of things being pulled. You know, it's not pulled by a bird. At the Haunted Mansion in Disney, it's... Uh, like invisible horses, I believe, pulling it. Thrustles me, <laughs> but I like this idea too. Super cute. I'm going to just grab now because I hear my daughter going out, out, out. Don't know if you hear her too, but she's sitting there going out, out, out. <laughs> so I might have to speed it up a little bit. But this one was a Scarlet House, uh, Mary Lindley, 1829. I loved this bird. I don't know why. It was just a unique shaped colored looking bird. And I believe I enjoyed the quote that's on here too. Yes, I did. Our home is not this mortal clim. Our life is not confined to time. And death is but the cloud that lies between our souls and paradise. Uh, Mary Lindley in the year 1829. And so I love a sampler without an alphabet. And I liked the quote even more. I'm a little concerned that that is going to be over one. 
I don't know if I told you guys, I was trying to stitch Eliza Penance by Plum Street Samplers, which is an old, older chart. It's a little tombstone. I didn't realize the majority of the pattern is words. I didn't realize they were all over one. I made myself sick stitching it and I'm not even exaggerating. Like I was nauseous. I was so sick. I could only stitch sometimes a couple of stitches at a time. And I tried to use the magnifiers. I tried everything and I, I made it through. I was determined because it was a small piece. But oh, I was so, so sick. Um, and that happens when I stitch on 40 count too. So I really try to steer away from it. I don't know why. I don't know what makes me feel so nauseous when I'm doing it. Maybe it's just too small and my eyes get crisscrossed and it doesn't lead to good things. So I'm a little nervous. But I guess I could fix that, right? I could just make this piece bigger. I can start from the bottom and just have regular sized words and then just have the border meet it. Maybe I'll do that. We'll see. It's cute though. Look at that little birdie. Such a happy little pretty bird. Uh, another Stacy Nash, which is the pumpkin harvest pin key. I have a thing for Stacy Nash lately. And she reminds me, there is like a little girl in a, not a little girl, there's a woman in the cemetery piece that she has. And I have that. And this looked like a sister piece to that, except with a chicken, <laughs> a spotted chicken. So why not? Had to happen, right? The last Scarlet House I have is Christmas Tide at Holly House. And this one I liked because of how well the bricks were done. Like it, it almost doesn't look like stitching. Like it's, I don't know. I, maybe it was just me that was super impressed, but I liked the way this, the, um, the bricks were done. And they were a little reindeer and I'm a sucker for a good Christmas piece. And because this wasn't like a regular house, I was like, yes, sign me up. I didn't look at the pattern, so I may be shooting myself in the foot because I'm assuming that's a lot of color changes, not just variegation. You know what? It does look like variegation. I don't think it'll be so bad. You have your typical little lines to make the bricks, and then it looks like you just fill them in. Maybe. <laughs> I like it, so I will stitch it. Super cute. Uh, and then there's only two more. I was going to show you some stitching, but... Daughter is getting persistent, so won't happen. But I ordered this from Kit's Kitten Stitcher. It's another Brenda Gervais. And it was a Christmas piece that I hadn't seen or I don't see stitched fairly often. Um, heap on the wood. And the quote on this one says, Heap on the wood, the wind is chill, but let it whistle as it will. We'll keep our Christmas merry still. And I like that. How cute is that? I don't know where that quote is from. It probably says here. I don't know if she came up with it, but I really liked it. And it's big, but it's simple with a lot of spacing. So I don't actually think it'll take that long. And I do not think those words are over one. So that's probably why it is as large as it is. Uh, the last one I have sitting here is Christmas Rose, which means, because I ordered two patterns with this. I ordered Feliz Navidad 2 from Blackbird Designs. It's not here, but that'll just be something to show you for next time. This is Christmas Rose. It was their new, this year's Christmas sampler. I keep saying this year's, 2020's Christmas sampler. And it was just perfect. Look at that tiny little house. And it, they, what I read was it was called Christmas Rose because of this. Um, I will be stitching it without the alphabet. So I will probably chop all of that off. Simple enough. Keep the Merry Christmas. Take away the years. And voila. It'll be a Christmas sampler that I can enjoy forever. Um, what my plan is for the next, I'm sorry I'm rushing through. I might, I do have some finishing things. I might, I have some stitches that are finished, not a lot. I think I might throw the berry video onto there since we hit about a half an hour here. Uh, and then 
I will show you all of the things that I have ordered online. We have another cat here. Come here, Luna. Come say hello fast. Okay. Um, so I can get some. So I can show you those pieces because I did want to show you all that, but I don't have time. Um, and then maybe if anybody wants to see, I will do the closet dive and we will see what Nicole needs finished. Right, Luna? What do you think? What do you think? No. Good. She agrees. Does that count? Does that mean it can be done? <laughs> I'm going to go with yes. So anyway, um, thank you all for coming by. I'm sorry I had to rush. Um, hopefully I'll see y'all soon and I will have answers as to what's going on with my arm and maybe I'll even be stitching again, right? Here's to feeling hopeful. Don't look at the cat butt. <laughs> Bye.